Is there anything that has not been written or said about Google's corporate culture? Fair to say it's probably one of the most researched and well-covered topics on the internet, including a blog I wrote in 2013 that is still the number one searched topic on my website. But most of what gets written about Google and shared feels unattainable. It's a corporate culture that was a function of the location where the inventors who were truly visionary leaders created Google and the laws of supply and demand for tech talent. And that confluence of those three forces has really created an amazing, amazing organization. But what we want is to unpack what is the attainable part. There are secrets here that any company can apply, and I want to boil those down to three things for you today, that if you do these well, and I've been doing these tested, proven strategies with my clients for years, they will help you build the type of organization where people are fully engaged, where innovation thrives, and where you can see that people are super happy to be working for you. So one thing before we dive into the three tips, these aren't really secrets. <laughs> they truly are just sound psychological practices of how you create a tribe. All right, so let's dive in. So the number one foundation of Google's culture is trust. I'm gonna read this because it's a quote from Jeff Jarvis about a book he wrote back, I believe it was in about 2013, called What Would Google Do? He says, there's an inverse relationship between control and trust. Trust is a two-way exchange, more than most people, especially leaders in power, realize. <clears throat> that trust is a mutual relationship of transparency and sharing. The more ways you find to reveal yourself and listen to others, the more you build trust. Give people control and we will use it. Don't, and you will lose it. How well do leaders practice this in your organization, the trust building? Hiring and promoting the right people is key, of course, because you need people who can be trusted and who have the skills and the attitudes of, uh, uh, that thrive in a high trust environment. The real key to getting this right is who you promote into leadership positions in your company. There are a lot of talented people in your organization who don't belong in people management roles. There are other ways to reward them. There are other career opportunities and paths that's getting much more common for organizations to have alternative career paths for people who really just aren't good in management or don't care all that much about people. Number two is the checks and balances piece. So there needs to be a strong system of accountability, of feedback in your organization. If you don't have that, you can't just let trust be a given, you have to measure, you have to get clear around your expectations, and you have to have checks and balances that if people are off track, that they're getting the kind of guidance and feedback that they need to get back on track. And if not, that there are consequences for not being able to uphold that culture, because that's really your promise to the rest of the employees, that if you leave people in place who are demonstrating untrustworthy behavior, that in itself puts a large chink in the armor of your culture. So Google's second lesson is innovation is everywhere. And they have built a culture that is founded and grounded in failure is good. And this is something that's highly unique to tech companies, but it doesn't need to be. That that old school practice of um, career limiting moves or throwing people under the bus that we hear those terms a lot in organizations where if you failed, if your project failed, you're marked. And this is the opposite of how Google does it. They actually really truly do reward people for taking risks and i remember once uh, i believe it was the gmail app reading about this a few years ago that was initially the first beta of that app or the first sort of um st out stepping out of that app was a huge failure and those people were upheld in the company at the following year at the awards ceremony as one of the most significant failures <laughs> and got the founders award. But if you think about any group of people that you're trying to get a brainstorming out of, how do you apply those same ground rules culturally? 
it's no idea is bad. Every idea is good. All ideas are welcome. Um, there's no shaming and blaming. And that type of cultural atmosphere takes work to get right, but it's absolutely worth doing. So Google's chief people officer, Laszlo Bach, said it really well. All it takes is a belief that people are fundamentally good and enough courage to treat your people like owners instead of machines. Machines do their jobs. Owners do whatever is needed to make their companies and teams successful. Half of the new products and features launched by Google are said to come from work done under the 20% rule. So 20% of their time can be used on anything. Half are experimental projects that were not designed and formally um, chartered. While that 20% may not be realistic in a smaller organization, you can and must experiment in your company far beyond what you're doing now. I'll bet you money it will raise productivity if you allow people to have experiments. You can do innovation days, contests where people can pitch their ideas to senior leaders. That kind of simple structure creates a huge amount of energy. Implement the ideas. So the simplest and best way to get more innovation is to show it goes somewhere. This means setting aside the notion that all ideas will translate into revenue or cost reduction. True innovation cultures realize that most ideas fail, but the ones that make it are worthy of the journey. Google products are always in beta. This is a, a, a Silicon Valley punchline. Mistakes are celebrated as one step closer to a win. Number three, hire right. Hiring is the most process driven thing we do. This is Shannon Deegan, vice president of HR. They have 2 million applicants and this is old data um, but from a couple of years ago. So it may be more than that by now, but they have 2 million applications for 500 jobs at Google. It's on that scale. The screening process is rigorous. They'll leave a role open a full year if they don't find the right fit for the position. Why is this so crucial? Because it's not about creating a cookie cutter group of people in the organization. It is about ensuring that the culture is built around uncompromising attention to core values and to right fit. And the right fit is people who can do the job, excel at the job, be successful in the job. The reason disengagement is hovering at two thirds for over 15 years is largely because there are people in almost every organization who aren't doing their job well, who were misfits in the first place, hired wrong, didn't get the feedback or the coaching, or just plain thought out in the wrong role. And those people are left in place and that wreaks a huge amount of havoc across the organization and its culture. It's far better to slow your growth and really scale back to what to fit what you can hire, train, coach and develop people to make happen. All right, so there are three simple tips that you can easily replicate. We provide great coaching and development for HR leaders and organizations that are going through massive amount of change. We would love to hear from you if that is something of interest to you. Please subscribe to our channel for more videos. Thanks for listening today. We'll see you in the next one.